had that opportunity. Keith, uh, Tom Osmond is a great football coach, the second winningest coach of all time. And just listen to this. His teams have finished in the top ten every year he's been the head coach. The first national championship is always the hardest. He's got a legitimate chance today to win because he can control his own destiny. A win today and a win against Penn State, he could be the national champions. This is what his team and his fans and everybody want to give him. Let's talk about Oklahoma's freshman quarterback, Tremel Holloway. I would guess, would you not, that Nebraska will sell out and try to get to him in the first quarter, probably the first five minutes, or at least the first possession may be the most important. Well, uh, Holloway's been successful, Keith, against the softest part of the Oklahoma schedule, but we can expect uh, the defense of Nebraska to give him a little bit different look, a faster pace, uh, quicker, and this is something he hadn't seen. I would expect Nebraska to jump him, jolt him, harass him, and confuse him, and try to destroy that confidence that he has right now. Of course, in the Nebraska Nebraska quarterback situation is not exactly a monument of confidence either. Keith, I cannot believe we're in this situation with such quality teams. Nebraska's had 495 yards total, total offense without an experienced quarterback. And what we may see today, get this fans, is another 18-year-old quarterback that hasn't played much football may come into this ball game. The 18-year-olds have already taken over this country. Now they're taking over college football. They haven't figured out how hard it is yet. Wait till they get to be juniors and seniors. You've got it all. You've got tradition. You've got longevity. You've got utmost quality. So what's left? Let's put it on the tee. What do you do when you already build one of the best production sports cars in the world? If you're Nissan, you build it. Supposedly going to deteriorate as the day goes on. We're starting with a temperature around 36, 37 degrees. The wind is building in its velocity. They're anticipating a chill factor into the high team. So everybody came kind of wrapped up, trying to stay warm for it. We're ready to go as Nebraska will kick off to Oklahoma. And deep are Patrick Collins, number 33, and Leon Perry, number two. Now, Perry has been a fullback out of the wishbone of late for Oklahoma. So it's a little surprising to see him back there in a role that he has not done a whole lot this year. Keith, he was a tailback in high school and played ha halfback at Oklahoma until two weeks ago. They needed another fullback to give some relief to Lydell Carr, and uh, he's a big threat also. He's another one of the babies that's just, making life exciting here the in freshman. this year. From Orlando, Florida. Fine hits it with a wind at his back, lifts it high in the air and deep into the end zone, and there will be no return. So the Oklahoma Sooners will start at the 20 with this young man we've talked about so much at the quarterback spot. Lydell Carr will open it fullback. Good, solid softball player. Anthony Stafford, a freshman, 165 pounds, and Patrick Collins, a sophomore, at 185 pounds. Derek Shepard will be the split end, 185, 5'11", and one of the fastest people on the field today. So let's see what Nebraska has in mind for young Mr. Holloway, and vice versa. Handles a first snap all right, keeps it going down the line, will lose about three yards as Chris Spockman, 6'5", 250 for Nebraska jumps in. Keith Jackson's a tight end, the big play man for the Sooners. Hope at tackle weighs 265. Hudson at guard weighs 280. Simpson at center weighs 265. Ferrer, the other guard, weighs in at 260. And Anthony Phillips is at 275. And he had been playing guard recently, but has moved back to tackle because of injury to Greg Johnson. So it is second down and let's say 12 yards now for the Sooners as they lose two on the first play. The ball goes this time to Patrick Collins who comes back to about the 21. So it'll bring up third down and nine as Nebraska sends Tucker, Spockman, Noonan, Scow, Reeves, Knox, and Parsons out there, the down linemen and backers, with Davis, Watkins, Washington, and Carr in the secondary. The three guys up front that can just make life miserable for you are Chris Spockman, Danny Noonan, and Jim Scow, the two tackles and the middle guard. They're all quick and all big. And Oklahoma's looking at third down and nine from its 21. 
at it to the fullback. Pull it out of his belly. Holloway keeps it. Comes up to the 29-yard line. He's a yard short of his first down. And Frank, I would say he has been baptized and survived. <laughs> he sure did. A tremendous cut on Holloway's part going inside the defensive end. <clears throat> so Nebraska lined up in a wrong defense there. Overshifted to the end of the boundary by mistake. <laughs> Gave Oklahoma a chance to make some yardage. Now the pressure is on the Sooner punter, Mike Winchester. Got to hit it into the wind. Wants to keep it down and does, and it's a good kick. And Nebraska feels it on a fair catch back at the 36. Rob Schnitzler pulls it down. The quarterback is McCathern Clayton. He is basically a running quarterback for the Huskers. <laughs> Doug DuBose, one of the best in the country at tailback for them. And Tom Rathman has become quite a story at fullback. He's big and he's very quick. Roger Lindstrom is the wing back. See him on that counter before the day is over. And Rob Schnitzler is the big play man at wide receiver. This is a power football team. It's a team that plays almost like it's playing single wing football. And they open up with a forward pass, and it's good to Schnitzler. And it's good for a first down at the Oklahoma 47-yard line. You just never underestimate Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne is a football gambler. He hasn't been throwing on first down. His pass passes have only completed less than 40%. We expected power football, and he upsets Oklahoma on the first play of the game. They've got to pass, I think, to win. If they pass successfully, they might win. It's a backdoor play. Given a Rathman the fullback, 220-pounder from Grand Island. Slams in there for a good gain. Todd Frayne playing with a sore ankle at tight end. Tim Roth, the tackle, 275. Blankenship, the guard, weighs 270. Bill Lewis, the center, big one, 6'6", 275. John McCormick, 6'2", 250. And the other tackle is Tom Welter, 6'4", and 275. And it is second down and seven for the Huskers. They go to Dubos. And Dubos is caught and shoved out of bounds around the 44-yard line. That's just about the line of scrimmage. Defensively for Oklahoma, they line up with Reed, Tupper, Casillas, Bryan, and Murphy up front with uh, Miliazzo and Bosworth at the backer spots. Bosworth is the helmet buster. White threw it up. Brown, Rayburn, the secondary. Sonny Brown, a time-tested veteran in the secondary, and almost seemingly always has a big play in this big game. Here's Clayton on a roll on third and seven. Throws, and he's lucky to get it back. Tony Rayburn was the man up there, got his hands on it, but couldn't pull it down. It was Bosworth who is laying the lick on the quarterback. The ball was thrown up high on the run. Quarterback Clayton didn't have a chance. And Von Shepard really prevents the interception by grabbing Rabin, number 35. Ball falls harmlessly to the ground. Keith, Nebraska has not been a good passing team on third down. Most of the passes have been on third down since they've been so effective with the run, they've really preferred to run the football. Dan Wingard is in to do the punting. Derek Shepard is deep for Oklahoma. You don't get much yardage running his punch back. He throws it way up into the air, lets the wind drift it, and it takes a good bounce for Nebraska and is bound at the eight-yard line. So once again, the Sooners come up short on field position. In a hurry late. It was 21-10 Carolina at one time. The Devils came back to win it 23-21. Get Jim Lampley a towel. Eight-yard line, first down for Oklahoma. Spencer Tillman and Leon Perry are now in the backfield for Oklahoma. Tillman, of course, the more experienced of all the backs. They stay inside with Perry, the fullback, out to about the 12, uh, just beyond the 11. So give him at least two and a half yards on the carry. The fullback in the wishbone, the first option of the triple option is the key man. You establish the fullback. He has to make yards or the wishbone is not very effective. Look for Perry. Hawkeyes of Iowa clinch now. They're on their way to Pasadena. Congratulations to Hayden Prime, a good friend. Second down and seven. Here goes Keith Jackson, the tight end on a reverse. Gets a block on the corner and breaks into the open. It's now a foot race. He's got an open field in front of him. He's running out of gas. He scores.
ました。They told you about it. Did they say they were going to run it in this particular field position? No, they said they had a trick play coming in. Keith Jackson was a great runner in high school, played safety man, returned punts, has tremendous speed. Nebraska was not looking for it. No, Oklahoma had never run the end-around play before. It, surprise, and it worked 88 yards for the touchdown. I hope we can get this silly nonsense of oranges being thrown on the field out of the way early so we can get on with the ball game. If they're going to do this all day long, we might be here till way past supper time. But it was certainly a shot out of the blue for Keith Jackson, the tight end. His stride was getting a little short at about the 15-yard line, but he had had tremendous blocking all the way down the field, and uh, nobody could catch him. So it goes 88 yards, and the Oklahoma Sooners are on the scoreboard at 11 minutes and 21 seconds to go in the first quarter. Tim Lasher is in for the extra point try. He's perfect this year on 34 tries. Fields had very wisely stopped the game, waiting for the fans to stop throwing the oranges. Why did they do that? Everybody knows they're going to the Orange Bowl. Why waste that good food? I don't know. They've done that. That's a tradition that uh, any team in the Big Eight, once they establish the, the Orange Bowl, the oranges come on the field. <clears throat> All right, Sonny Brown will hold it for Lasher. A game of this quality, extra points can mean a lot. Good. Surprise plays, Keith. Sometimes work, sometimes they don't. The fake of the triple option and the tight end blocks and then comes back to the other side. Deep, 240 pounds, good blocking, kind of like a punt return. The wide receiver, Morris, number 84, makes a good block. We'll show you that a little bit later. Here's the but key you, one. But you can see the backs. That's number 20, Spencer Tillman, screening off the final defender, and Jackson, the tight end, scores with the ball. 88 yards. Watch the fake, and the fake to the fullback to the left. And all the time, the offensive linemen are going to go around and form a wall of blockers. Now, when we pick up Jackson again, watch the red shirts over here. They've got outside position, and they set up the wall, letting Jackson, number 88, go right down the boundary. Good blocking. The timing was perfect. I don't ever remember seeing a surprise play work so beautifully this early in the football game. Doug DuBose now is deep for Nebraska on the return along with Keith Jones. And the story on Jones is this. He is the fastest Cornhusker ever, timed at 4-3 in the 40. And I guess it was done electronically to prove the point. So Keith Jones is back there along with Doug DuBose. And of course, DuBose is no gimme either. Old driving kick into the wind, way back into the end zone, and no return. Here's the touchdown again. Number 84, Lee Morris, the split end, is going to make the key block. We never know how important every little block is. He comes across, and now he's going to screen number 45. You think if he hadn't have delayed him here just a little bit, watch what's going to happen with number 45, Carr, coming all the way. He could have possibly made the tackle. He just misses him there one foot. Just one foot. The block by Morris, the key play. Matter of inches as Nebraska comes from the 20, and they go with DuBose on an inside play to the 23. That's a stunner, Keith. That's a stunner. That just startles you. It takes your wind out of you. Nebraska's going to have to have great leadership, some a lot of character to come back now for the next two or three series and be responsible. Clayton, he's a good runner, runs the option a lot. Down the line he goes, outside pitch to DuBose. DuBose gets by the cover man and gets a first down as he gets up to about the 32, 33-yard line. That defensive end, I think it was, on that side, 
was reaching for him, and DuBose put on change gears and just went zip right by him. How good is Doug DuBose? There are his numbers. Outstanding because he not only has quickness and speed, but he's tough, and he can run over people when he has to. He's out close to the 34 on that carry. First down for the Cornhuskers. Sooners out to the 7-0 lead on the second game New York run. DuBose working his way through traffic to about the 37 where he is brought down. Miliazzo, the linebacker, number 42, had the boast in the backfield. Couldn't hold on to it. Broke through for a short yardage and avoided the loss. Makes a big difference, Keith. Got an it's... Oklahoma man down. He got caught, whoever that is, got caught in the bottom of the pileup and apparently was twisted around. So a timeout for the injured player. Excuse me, any Christmas gifts under $10 are Ace November Best Buys. This Chicago Cutlery Gourmet Knife Set is only $9.77. What a bargain. And these normal 100 mini light sets are just $4.44. Oh, I'll take two. The defense at Oklahoma, well, the coach says this about this bunch. We are an excellent defensive football team. There's no question. We have three players that are good at, at are probably the best players that have ever played that position in Oklahoma. Murphy at the end, Casillas at nose guard, and Bosworth at linebacker. So we're an excellent front. We've had some problems in the secondary, but they're mature, they're older, and they're better now. So we've, we've improved there, too. David Vickers has come in at strong safety, uh, replacing Sonny Brown. Uh, Vickers actually may wind up playing free safety with Tony Rayburn moving over to the strong spot. But Brown now is walking around on the sidelines and looks like he may be all right. It is second down and seven for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska now as Clayton brings him up out of the eye formation at their own 37-yard line. Clayton takes it twice, keeps it, now pitches it outside. It's a high pitch. DuBose does well to pull it down. And then DuBose is brought down by David Vickers just over the 40. A little razzle-dazzle, Keith. A fake reverse to the wing back. Option play down the line, trying to confuse the great speed of the linebackers of Oklahoma. Making them stay home is a problem because they can run and involve in most every play. Clayton goes the other way this time, keeps it, turns into traffic, and will get a yard out of the play as the Sooner defense is so quick to react. Dante Jones, a sophomore out of Dallas, got that hit, and it's going to bring up a fourth down, and the Huskers will have to punt it. There's not much chance to run wide on this Oklahoma defense. That's the strength of their team and the fact that they run so effectively to have the speed and they chase that football in a bad frame of mind. Sonny Brown's obviously going to be all right because he's already back in the ball game. Just a little nerve injury. Shepard is the deep man. Brown is the short man. Winger's punt not very good. He was trying to lift another one up into the wind, but it's a tail dragger and takes a Nebraska bounce and goes rolling and rolling and rolling and finally dies just inside the 10. So once again, the Sooners come out here with very poor field position, but the last time, they blew the big one for 88 yards. Look at these team stats, Keith. I'm, I'm purely amazed. These teams are great. Oh, they hadn't played a tough schedule, a combination of both. Look at that, rated one, two in the top ten, or three in the top ten in every category. Rushing offense, rushing defense, everything. They've got great speed on offense at Oklahoma, and the key for Nebraska in this ball game is can they slow that speed down? They'll start at the ten. It's Stafford, Collins, and Carr behind Holloway in the wishbone. Fullback has it. And it's a pickup of three yards. Eight minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. That's a real tough ball game going down Austin, Texas, but trying to stay in the Cotton Bowl race. Crash the defense, he looks like he can run up the middle. They're just deep linebackers, but they seem to close pretty effectively. There without Mark Munford, who they lost him to knee injury last week. Holloway was held in the backfield for just a fraction of a second by a Nebraska defender. Good penetration, but he slid away from him and got the ball out to about the 16. So they're looking at second down here. And third down, excuse me, and uh, it's a short four yards. Barry Switzer, the winningest active coach in college football. What a great organizer he is and motivator, Keith. Uh, in talking to the 
people who coach around him, and he coached for me and played for me. They say he's got the best relationship with his players. They play hard for him. Spencer Tillman is back in the backfield. He's been known to throw a halfback pass, but Holloway's going to throw it instead down the middle for Jackson. He's got it, and he's down at the Nebraska 46-yard line, and if Holloway had given him the ball sooner, he would have scored again. Keith, the one thing that... Nebraska does with their free safety is support the option play. Watch number 19. You can see him right up there. He's coming up to support the running play, and when he does, you see that Jackson gets in behind him, but the wind held the ball up. One, one thing that we know about the wishbone, and I've tried to defend it myself, you cannot support that quick with a free safety. The tight end will kill you down the middle. First down, Sooners at the Husker 46. Flip it outside. There are three white shirts out there chasing Patrick Collins. And you know Patrick has got to lose that wrestle as he goes down at the 45. Jim Scow is one of the best football players in Nebraska. Number uh, 96. He's trying to penetrate. When he does, he gets a double team right there. First by Hudson, 79, and Pope, 63. And boy, he, all he can do is hold his ground there. But that's a classic illustration of how you double team a great football player. Ball is near the 44. Second down, eight. Keith Jackson has 126 yards in the ball game so far. That goes to Collins again, and Collins will get maybe a yard out of it. As once again, Noonan, Spockman, Scow, and company roll him back. The wishbone is so effective at running the ball, Keith. It's a goal line offense with big play responsibilities, so you involve your secondary, and you're eager to chase when they start the option play. So it leaves you vulnerable. I have worried so much about that tight end trying to defend Darrell Ward's Texas team. I know how Tom Osmond feels. Stafford back in for Tillman now on third down and seven. Holloway going down the line with it. Keeps it. Turns up field. First down. Breaks loose. They score. Touchdown. So much for a freshman Jim. play you this is the speed we talked about earlier god-given talent and then he has the awareness to just split the would-be defenders and he has the speed we've already talked about the quickness everything it takes to be a wishbone quarterback and he just trots into the end zone knocks number 44 big strong linebacker but not quite the speed to get there 19 the safety man misses him he brad smith had a hold of him too and couldn't hold him 81 well, <laughs> I guess he's taking care of the doubters, huh? He certainly has. The Oklahoma coaches went out and watched him play in high school and came back and said he's the best wishbone quarterback prospect. We've seen it. He's going to be our quarterback for four years. Lasher, good on the front. Jackson leads Auburn against Alabama. Stay tuned for the announcement of next week's game. Holloway going 43 yards to cap that procession for Oklahoma. Field position hasn't bothered him much, has it? <laughs> no, it ha when you've got that lightning speed and the trick play and it all works, you score. Todd Thompson kicks it high down to the goal line. It is taken by Keith Jones. Got a wedge, breaks it out, and then bingo at the 28-yard line. It'll be first down for the Cornhuskers. But they look up at that clock and they see five minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first quarter and they're down by 14 points. An amazing thing, Keith. Oklahoma has 11 freshmen and sophomores starting in their top 22. On the other hand, Nebraska has only one true sophomore that's playing out of the top 44. So this is a young Oklahoma team and explosive. 191 yards and only three first down. From the 28 now. See what the Huskers, see if they can get something going here. They give the ball to Rathman, and Tom never really has a chance. 
He has been very effective this year. Uh, that little uh, fullback trap with a backdoor play, and he's made some big runs. But that time, when he got the ball, Paul Miliazzo, a junior out of Kansas City, came with it. Remember, Keith, that uh, Oklahoma now has Tony Casillas, the great nose guard, back in the lineup from an injury. He's 280 pounds and really a dominant football player right on the center's nose. He takes a lot of double team. That frees one of the backers. Here's the pitch back to DeVos, who wants fakes the forward pass, holds it down, starts running, and gets it to the 30. Here's Tim Brandt for a moment. Keith, they've just finished working on Jamil Holloway, the Oklahoma quarterback. On that last play on the touchdown, he sprained the big toe on his left foot. They have taped it up. They're putting his shoe back on. He still has not tried to stand on it. He says to the trainers that he thinks he's going to be okay. But it is a sprained big toe, what they call an astroturf toe, on his left foot. Boy, they can hurt. Keith, they not only can hurt, they can take you out of the ball game for a long time. I had a player miss three, his last three years with an astroturf toe. Never play after his freshman season. Eric Mitchell, who's another freshman, may get to see some action today. Quick pop by Clayton. Good to Schnitzler. He's going to break a big play out of it and go across midfield. As he gets to the Oklahoma 49, where Liddell Glenn brings him down. This type of play, the quick pass to the split end. The quarterback doesn't drop back, and therefore the defensive backs, linebackers, are right in there on him. Six red shirts there, but Schnitzler splits them for the big game. Here he is, turning inside, inside the linebacker, right there. Now he makes a nice gain as the safety man misses it. Something Nebraska needed, another first down right here, Keith. They need to keep that ball a while. Clayton turns around, flips the ball back. Dubos makes a one-handed reception of it and runs the ball inside the 44. Let's go for a moment to Jim Limpley. For the latest on the Cotton Bowl, in Austin, Texas has beaten Baylor, so the Bears are out of the Cotton Bowl. Texas can go to the Cotton Bowl, apparently, if it beats Texas A&M on Thanksgiving Day in College Station. Right now, the Aggies lead TCU 22 to nothing. Back to you, Keith. Well, that old one down the southwest is going to have some meaning for change, isn't it? Ball is given to fullback Rathman on second down and four, and Tom fights his way close to the 40-yard line. Keith, I think Tom Rathman, the fullback, has got to be a key factor in this ball game. This season, he's had uh, long runs all during the season, and he's averaging 7.7. 7. His long runs, 84, 37, 32, and 44, and 52. So he needs to pin down these linebackers by making some yardage up the middle. Third down, a yard and a half for the Huskers. They go to the post. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Never had a chance. I mean, there were four red shirts coming after him, but number 44 was the first one. That's Brian Bosworth, the 235-pound sophomore linebacker. Barry Switzer says that Byron Bosworth, the greatest linebacker ever played for Oklahoma. Here's a good illustration of why he would make that statement. He's a gambler in that he fires when he sees a chance, and he comes right through and tackles the goals for the loss on a short yard what we call critical situations in a ball game. Just named yesterday, was he not academic All-American? Yes, he was. He has over a three-point average. Punt by Winger. High hanger. Huskers down there. They should be able to kill it. The man covering it was Schnitzler, and he rolled into the end zone, but they give him a spot at the two. A 41-yard punt by Winger, and most efficient. 2-12 to go first quarter. Start. And uh, figured field position, and a lot of people do rate field position as one of the critical things in the ebb and flow of a ball game. You'd think Oklahoma would be down by 14, but not so. Their field position is getting worse. They start this time from the two, but they lead 14 to nothing. And they go to a one-back offense, and Holloway's going to throw on first down. Loops it toward the sidelines for Keith Jackson, but he was being well covered by Brad Smith, the defensive end who had dropped off on that side. Keith, am I believing what I'm seeing? I'm surprised. That, that we said that Tom Osmond was a gambler. What about Barry Switzer from his one, two yard line, lining up in a spread formation and throwing a pass with a freshman quarterback? That is new and different, but that's what Barry's always done. He's pulled off the unexpected. That's Tom Osmond trying to get the blocking straight for the Nebraska offensive line. They've been busting their plays. Penalty 
flag the first one of the ball game. As Spencer Tillman carries and is very close, close to a first down. One of the Nebraska defensive linemen was bouncing around. Scow, I think it was. Yeah. It was Jim Scout, the right tackle. He leaned he into, yeah, he encroached, and he leaned into the inside, number 96, right here, the right of your screen. You can see he's trying to move into that big old gap between the tackle and guard. He wanted to get across there, and when he did, they blocked him right out, but he was all sides. And it'll be a first down, I think, for Oklahoma. They'll probably yeah, refuse it. On the defense. He's going to be second to foot. Decline, third down. Third, third down third and down. close there. Yeah, third and close. <laughs> Scow wanted to Keith move in and jump into that gap and try to penetrate and cause havoc into the Oklahoma backfield. Penetration hurts the wishbone. Six different center backs have carried the ball so far in this first quarter. And a tight end. And a tight end, yeah. <laughs> Carries the fullback, but Holloway, the quarterback, keeps it. Slides right over the left side behind Simpson and Hudson, and he's got the first down. Right after the loss to Miami uh, and the uh, loss of their starting quarterback, Troy Aikman, because of a broken ankle, there were two other changes made that had uh, tremendous impact on the offense. They moved uh, Mark Hudson into a guard spot, a 280-pound sophomore, and Anthony, Anthony Phillips, a redshirt freshman at 275, into the guard spot. And uh, that really made a big, big difference for them. The, Keith, the reason for that is that the wishbone needs big offensive guards if the team covers them with big defensive tackles, and so they put their muscle at guard and their speed and quickness at tackle, and it's made a big difference. It is a first down for the Sooners. They've got a little room now. The ball is out near the 13-yard line with a minute and 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma hopping out to a 14 to nothing lead on an 88-yard run by the tight end Keith Jackson and a 43-yard scamper by Janelle Holloway. The ball this time is carried by Spencer Tillman, and Tillman gets good yardage out close to the 18-yard line. Tillman is a junior at 205 yards. He has been hampered all this year and uh, much of last year with a hamstring pull. Very, very difficult to get it well. He's the only Oklahoma back to rush for 1,000 yards as a freshman and has been hampered, as Keith said, by injuries. Oklahoma splitting two men, Keith, and Nebraska's going into a loose defense and running right at him. Make it the 17 for this snap. And call it second down and five and a half. Here comes Holloway. 20, 20. Oh, my gosh, did you see that stiff arm? He stuck the hand right in Brian Siebler's face, a junior from Fremont. trying to blitz the quarterback and came in and belted the quarterback but the ball was long gone and by vacating that spot he gave the ferry a wide open field. Oklahoma's running now total 204 yards and the quarter isn't over yet. Fumble, fumble I think and it is Nebraska coming up for the ball. Greg Reed, defensive end number 84. So the Sooners turn it over. 
up the middle. Probably got hit just as he was getting the ball headed from the quarterback. And the, let's see if we can tell. Fullback call right there. Let's see what happens to the ball. The ride play. Fullback got his quarterback. I don't think Carr ever knew he was going to keep the ball. I think he felt that uh, Holloway was going to keep him go outside. So the Cornhuskers now trying to cash in this opportunity. Clayton drops back to throw on first down. And Luke said it'll be intercepted. It is caught on the fly by Lavelle Glenn. Yeah, all he had to do was just stand in and wait for it. It was a wounded goose that was far, far over the head of Vaughn Shepard, the intended receiver. Fake up the middle, trying to get the Oklahoma defensive back to fight. So why should they fight? Nebraska hadn't made any yards running the ball. Why come up, lay back, and he does. Catches the ball. Very poorly throw, Pat. Well, the Sooners get it right back now. Each team with a turnover. And we've only had, however, one flag in this first quarter, and we have seven seconds to play. And as I told you a moment ago, Oklahoma has 204 yards running the ball. Just outside the 31. So right back to the fullback. Ball got away from him the last time. Confidence builder here. Give it a car, and car slams in. Or a good five yards in the quarter is over. Bold picture, but now let's go back to Keith and Frank. That fumble a moment ago, the turnover by Oklahoma was charged to the quarterback Holloway, and that car never really got the ball. I guess he laid it on his hip and it bounced away. That's the risk of the triple option. It's a read by the quarterback. He either declines, gives it to him, or pulls it out and takes it outside. Second down four now as we go to the second quarter. Oklahoma's ball at their own 37, leading 14 to nothing. Ball goes again to the fullback car, and he's close to the first down. Keith, going back to the free safety, making the tackle on the quarterback. Last year and the year before, Brett Clark, the free safety for Nebraska, made that play. He was outstanding, about 210 pounds, ran a 4-5, and uh, he could do it. But look at the stats for this first quarter. They astound anybody when you see that the 211 yards rushing, Nebraska only given up 91 yards a game previous to this. Oklahoma has already doubled that, more than doubled it in the first quarter. And it's first down from the 42. All the way going down the line, turns it up to the 45. Three yards on the carry. A little bit of a change in defensive strategy. Two split ends. Nebraska been moving four people out. I cannot believe that. You don't need to move anybody out. Let them throw. The, let Oklahoma throw the ball. You have to stop the run first. Now they're moving back in and covering the receivers one on one and defying Oklahoma to throw the football. That's the only way you can play. The only way you can play. Barry is upset because the offense, defensive halfback came up and tackled the pitch man when he was looking back. And the new rules say that you cannot do that. It's a kind of a half cheap shot, but the um, official didn't see it. The referee is supposed to see it. Second down and seven. Holloway under some heat. And slides away from two people, but will take a sack. Back inside the 40 to about the 37. Danny Noonan, the middle guard, is involved in it. And Jim Scow, the tackle. Well, Jim Scow has made some great plays. Watch number 96. This young man has made 48 tackles this year. And get this, 36 or 35 of them have been for a loss. And here's a good reason why. He will not stay blocked. You get you headgear on him, but he pushes right off. Scow flushed him out of the pocket, and it looks like Smith, number 92, came over and made the tackle. Neil Smith is just a sophomore out of New Orleans and is coming off the field now as he, when he went down, twisted his leg. So Neil hobbling a bit as he comes out of the ball game. It'll be third down now for Oklahoma, and this time they're looking at third and long. It's about third and 15. In the old days, Oklahoma would not throw on third and long. They'd run the option play, line up and kick the ball. But today they have an auxiliary offense, and they might just throw the ball. In fact, they're lining up in a double wing. Carr, the long remaining back. Quarterback throw. Fullback. So they give it to Carr, the fullback, and Carr takes a pretty good lick. Reels ahead to about the 42. 
Tucker. Tucker. Hit him Tucker. Hit him solid. And now the Sooners will punt as Winchester comes into the ball game. He's out of Marietta, Oklahoma. And Rod Schnitzler will be the deep man for Nebraska. To understand that tactic, you have to appreciate the wishbone is more of a running offense than it is passing. Winded is back. Winchester hangs it out there. The ball bounces straight sideways and out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. 12-28 to go in the first half, and it's 14-0 Oklahoma. Been a great passing team, although we've had games where we've thrown the ball fairly well, and I think it's going to be important that we be able to run some. You know, if they just shut down our running game totally, we'll be in a lot of trouble. And they are in a lot of trouble right now. Of course, it's only uh, second quarter of play. 12-28 to go in the first half. But the Nebraska plays have been eight runs by DeBose, four others, including Rathman, and there have been four passes, and they are sports. And Clayton stays in at quarterback, hands the ball off to the eye back, Doug DeBose, and Doug gets it up across the 30-yard line. That's about a seven-and-a-half, eight-yard pickup for him. A little misdirection play to freeze the linebackers and get a pretty good blocking angle on uh, Oklahoma's uh, strength of their defense. Uh, misdirection may be something that uh, Nebraska's got to use more of. Well, the wingback counter is still a basic play for Nebraska, too. They run that a lot. The wingback reverse. Got a back goal with Rathman. This has been the kind of a play that he has been so successful with that he's successful again. He's got a first down up to 41. I said earlier that Rathman has got to be the key, the quick hit and play. Just turn around, hand it off. Good blocking by Roth, 65. Then you see the power of Rathman. He runs right over Bosworth. That has to the collision. I was looking for it. See what happened. Rathman and Bosworth. And Bosworth hits him, but he doesn't get a good hold on right here. Boom! But old Rathman keeps going for the first half. <laughs> he dance. certainly did. Round one to Tom. <laughs> this is DeBose. This time, Bosworth didn't miss. He had a little help from Tony Rayburn, but it was Bosworth that had his helmet on the numbers. Why is Bosworth such a great player? Coaches told me yesterday one thing, instincts. Plus, he's mean as the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he has those instincts. He's just a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, right there. Raven, who's a tough football player, too, the strong safety. Boy, I'd hate to run into those two, Keith. He's in there yesterday with that hair nubbed right down and uh, big old thick neck bouncing around, delighted that he had been named an academic All-America. But you could see the fire in the belly was burning already. Keith, I, I told you then, he, he should go. He's going to play pro ball, but he should go in the Marines. He'd be the best Marine major the country's ever seen. <laughs> oh, he looked apart. Second down and nine for the Huskers. Ball is sitting between the 41 and 42 hash marks with 10.55 to go. And Nebraska being very deliberate about things. They're sorting it out as they go along. They're down 14-0, but there is certainly no panic. This is the goal. Here comes your reverse. It is Shepard. On Shepard. Big play. Gone. Gone now. It's a foot race to the corner. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds at the six-yard line. Sonny Brown saved the touchdown. Would you believe another trick play? Pitch the ball back to DuBose. He hands it. Now watch the blocking. The same kind of play that the end of the round was. You have a wall of blockers, and Clayton, the quarterback, is right out there. Let's see what he does. And Shepard is their big play artist. Tremendous speed and running ability. 52 yards for Nebraska. They really got that mark right on the money, and it was hard because that one official was tied up trying to catch up. This is Clayton spinning inside, and he gets almost nothing out of it as Tony Casillas closes the door. Casillas, what a football player. How would you like to coach all your life and have a nose guard that's 270 pounds and quick? Now, he'll get blocked every once in a while, but what makes him great, he never stays blocked. He moves right off of the center, Lewis, and out to the ball carry, and he makes the key play. Remember, Oklahoma has not had a touchdown scored against it in 15 quarters. No, I'm sorry, 12 quarters. Second down and goal. Ball still at the six. Clayton rolls it out. Big the pass. Sacked by Kevin Murphy. Number 39, the redshirt senior, injured last year, All-American. 
Kevin Murphy is one of those dominant football players that we talked about, five of them, on this defense. You're not going to go around his end. He was all-conference as a sophomore. That was three years ago, Keith, since he's had a redshirt season. It is third and goal for the Huskers, and the ball is now back near the seven. Schnitzler is the wide man at the top of the picture. They want to throw it to him. They put it in the corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete, defended by Liddell Glenn. So Glenn comes up with his second big play of the game. That was close, however, to face guarding. If you can face guard, if you don't make any contact with the receiver, as long as you don't make contact, Glenn number seven is right there. Now, if he makes contact in that fashion in any way, then it's interference. But the ball would have been out of the end zone if it had been completed. I think so, now. But we have seen it. 23-yard field goal try by Dale Klein, who kicked seven against Missouri. A game Nebraska won 28 to 21. And he missed this one wide right. He tried to hook it back in from the angle on the left side and didn't get it to pull back. And so they're shut out on the drive. Ball game. Nebraska just finished a drive of 71 yards, a big 52-yard run by Shepard. Eight plays, but no points. No points. Oklahoma's ball at the 20, leading 14-0. Holloway turns and gives the ball to Spencer Tillman, and he's got about three, maybe four, as we go to Jim. to the 24-yard line, second down six. No, Jim. 24-yard line. Second down. Call it six. Perry's in there at fullback right now as Holloway comes down the line with it, tries to pitch it out, does get it away just barely. He almost made a bad decision there. And a penalty flag is down as Anthony Stafford just scooped it up off the ground and moved up field with it. And the penalty flags are up where the tackle was made. And it looks like it might be against the Huskers. It's a face mask, Keith. But the amazing thing is that Stafford, who's just a freshman, was able to handle that bad pitch. The ball was, as you said, nearly on the ground. He had to bend over and he caught it in stride and made a nice gain out of it. Well, an 18-year-old just doesn't know how hard it is yet. <laughs> They're taking over the world, I'm telling you. <laughs> <coughs> they ding him with a big call, too. Here's the play. Good defense by Nebraska. They have the Holloway right here, number, number 81. No foul. Now, Smith, and the ball is pitched very low. Stafford comes up with it, and then he makes a nice run here. Uh -oh. That is the, uh, for, there's the grab right Paul, there right there. Brian the, Davis, yeah. No, Davis, that's right, Brian Davis, number 32. They nailed him 15, didn't they? Yes, they did. Twisted. Turn. Vance Carlson heading up the officials for today's Big 8 game. Holloway turns, hands that ball to uh, Stafford again. And Anthony Stafford is stopped hard at the 46, and we'll try Jim again. All right, Keith, and as you look at two of the three top teams in the nation, here's what's happening to the other team in the Big 8 title picture. Oklahoma State has gotten one second-and-a-half touchdown, still trails Iowa State 12-10 in the fourth quarter. Key to the game, Jim Kreiner's team is holding Thurman Thomas in check. At last report, 15 carries, 47 yards for Thomas, so the upset's still brewing in Ames. Yours, Keith. About 28 degrees up there today. They were forecasting, so it's cold and snowy. Holloway got a good block from somebody over there and hurdles over the top of number 55, it was. They gave him the block, Paul Ferrer. Otherwise, he might have been sacked. As I sit here, Frank, and watch with some 75,000-plus in the stadium, across the way, almost nobody in attendance is a real football game, a soccer game ebbing and flowing. But here's the play now. As you see Ferrer pull, make the block, and this is what uh, kept Holloway from uh, getting sacked. And that time, Ferrer got a good lick on Scout. Scout did his job, though, Keith. He turned Holloway in an option play to the inside for a short game. Third down and seven. Down the line, Holloway. Keeps it this time, does not risk the throw. And again, making a good play at that defensive end position is Brad Smith, who stayed home. Brad Smith is a senior, and he played it beautifully, Keith. He did not jump on the quarterback and let him get out. What do you think of that one? It's going to be sensational. Sensational. Well, Seahawks have been wobbling some lately. 
They haven't played uh, terribly well. Whereas the 49ers are with the Rams now is on a losing streak. The 49ers are right back in the hunt in that NFC West. That's our presentation Monday night here on ABC. High, high kick. Forcing a third catch. Did he, did he call third catch? I guess not. Well, that's dangerous. You could lose your noggin on a play like that. Six minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first half. The Sooners, 14 to nothing. Six, key man, gotta be. His coach says this. Tom is playing probably as well as any as any fullback, certainly in America, I think, right now. And it's unfortunate a guy like Tom uh, can't be an All-American player. He doesn't have the stats. They, they look at raw yards. But when you look at a guy that can block and, and still go 80 yards for a touchdown, and, and Tom has uh, surprising speed. He certainly does. 6.32 to go now as the Huskers come up. First down at their own 23, and there was a penalty on that previous uh, reception of the punt. Moving the ball out to a little better field position, and Nebraska going to its muscle has the ball out to the 31 as Doug DeBose responds straight ahead and is brought down by Brian Bosworth. Here's Bosworth again. Getting the instinct of where the play is, hopping around. Then he takes on the blocker, but he doesn't get blocked. Rathman tried to move him out of the play, but he couldn't. He's one of the prime <laughs> candidates for the new award for linebackers being started in Orlando, Florida, the Dick Butkus Award. Those votes are to be made shortly. Second down and three. DuBose keeps it. They ran that same formation with the same movement where they had the reverse by Shepard for 52 yards. This time, DeBose kept it, and Casillas and Bosworth messed it up. A little bit of a fake reverse this time, but once again, the two great players, Casillas, he runs behind the center, Lewis, and has the speed. Watch him go out and finally <laughs> slow DuBose down enough for number 44, the bell cow. He knows how to get through traffic and just works his way through and makes the tackle. Third down and three. Clayton down the line, going around the corner, has a first down as he gets up to about the 35. And again, Bosworth reaching over the top. One thing, Keith, that uh, we should mention here, the Casillas play and the nose guard frees up the linebacker. He merits double team blocking. And normally a person who might be assigned to block Bosworth has to stay there and take care of Casillas on the line of scrimmage. The Huskers do have their first down just over the 35 on Clayton's run. Clayton coming down, gets good block on the corner, cuts it back inside, and he is just short of midfield, and McCathern has another first down. He's a sophomore from Orlando, Florida. Look at the contrast. There's the soccer game that's going on way over there on the soccer field. <coughs> Maybe 20 people watching. But back Relative. a few <laughs> yards, you have this. What a contrast. Soccer, or uh, football, as it's known throughout the rest of the world, one of the heaviest attended sports of all, but not in this country. First down. Which out is bad. Gets a good bounce up into the arms of Doug DeBose. But at that time, the Oklahoma defense is all over him back at the 39-yard line of Nebraska. When a quarterback is running the option play and he's under the rest, I always said, hey, don't pitch it. Right there, he pitches the ball way out in front. He didn't take the ball to Murphy, the defensive end, and Murphy could just play both of them right there. He could play the quarterback and the pitch man. That was a bad play on the quarterback's part. No threat of the option at all. And the loss is about 11 yards. Second down, 21. Clayton, very, very good protection. Now throws it deep, and he's got a man down there. And a great play by Sonny Brown in front of Rod Smith. Keith, when you called it a great play, it's, I'd like to put a sensational on it with it because the receiver was open for the touchdown as Keith said, and Smith and Brown has a long way to go. He breaks on the ball, leaves his feet, and knocks it down right out of Rod Smith's hands. Here's Casillas, number 92, double team right there. Now he still fights his way through. He's not going to give up. That's that combative attitude, and probably takes a little bit off the pass. Could have been the difference right there. Clayton is two out of six in his passing for 37 yards. Intercepted once. Trying to set up a screen pass. 
but he is absolutely buried. Kevin Murphy and uh, Dotty Jones were flying in on top of him, and he really had no chance to do anything with it. Don't get yourself in the problem of third long teeth against this Oklahoma defense. Avoid that at all costs because they are sensational when they've got you backed up and know you've got the pass. So in comes Dan Wingard, the punt, senior from Omaha. 36, 49, 41 in his three previous punts. This is high, but the wind's going to kill it. And the wind knocked it out of bounds, and he'll get very little out of that one. You can't put the ball up in the air going right to left today. 3.47 to go in the first half. Only a 17-yard punt. Defense making adjustment, Keith. They've changed a lot of things first. Oklahoma now from the 44. Del Carr. Iowa State with another field goal in a cold day up at Ames to a five-point lead over Oklahoma State. Well, that would be a, a, a jarring, major upset. damaging upset, wouldn't it? Well, the Razorbacks Oklahoma State. pulled out a big one, Keith. Kenny Hatfield's done a great job. Second down, six. All squirted out from under... Uh, the quarterback of Oklahoma that time, Holloway, and guess who's in there? They go Jim Scow. Well, Jim Scow is across that line. It's unbelievable. When I tell you that he 38 tackles, 30, uh, 48 tackles, 35 of them have been for losses. Here's why. Coming from the backside, Oklahoma's option is a little bit slow, faking to the fullback. Holloway didn't come out like he should have, and Scow, another tackle for loss. And a timeout spent here by Oklahoma with two minutes and 44 seconds to go in the first half. The ball is at the 46. It'll be third down and seven when the ball is next snapped. But right now, let's have a look at the Nebraska campus in Lincoln. Iowa State still leading Oklahoma State, still are now by a score of 15-10. Back to Keith Jackson and Norman. And here again to reemphasize adjustments defensively by Nebraska. First quarter, Holloway ran for 70 yards. The last four times he's had the ball to run with it, and he's lost six. It's third down and seven for the Sooners now. Here comes Jackson on that tight end reverse, and he's got it big again. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the 25. At the 25. Just short of the 25. It's a first down for the Sooners. Dude, that's a good-looking play. I mean, it a good-looking play. You have to go fast with the speed of Oklahoma to the right of your screen, and then the tight end comes around, and what happens? You, all your football team have chased the what looked like to be the play, and Smith gets blocked by a fine uh, block by the offensive lineman there, and there's the big Jackson going down for the first down on third and long, steps out of bounds with his right foot. Well, that's what. He had 88 yards on the previous uh, reverse, and this one goes for 28 yards. That's Lydell Carr from just outside the 25 to the 24. And he stopped Kerplunk. Keith, let me try to explain, if I can, what Nebraska did defensively. Coming in the ball game, they were going to stop everything. The fullback and let the safety man take the quarterback and the halfback take the pitch and the quarter the safety man couldn't make the play now they've widened their defensive men and and saying to oklahoma beat me inside i'm not going to let you get outside if i can keep from you. they've widened everybody it's second down and nine at the husker 24 for the sooners holloway gets away outside the pitch goes at stafford and stafford is down at the 21 talking about being under duress on an option play and still making yards, Keith. That was sensational effort by Holloway, the quarterback. Brian Washington had a hold of him. Looked like Brian Washington was going to get him, but uh, he just pulled away from Brian and got rid of the ball. That was uh, a ball game played a lot closer to the vest than uh, some people thought it might be. Up at South Bend, but uh, LSU winning it. Another big year for Bill Arnsparger. Third down. And six from the 21. And it to the full back. Yep. Car rolling over the top. And it was absolutely.
absolutely nothing there. The only thing he could get out of it was a body roll over the top, and he got two yards to the 19. Now, do we see the place kicker? Yes, sir. Deep, the Nebraska defense are playing what the Oklahoma coaches thought they would play. They played this defense that they're using now against Colorado. They used it against Oklahoma last year. I'm sure they were surprised to see Nebraska come in with a different defense in the first quarter. Tim Lesher, 37-yard field goal try out of Sonny Brown's hold. Plenty of leg. And good. With one minute and 18 seconds to play in the first half. At Oklahoma, 17, Nebraska nothing. Football stadium is on campus. Very near the central part of the campus, actually. 118 now as Thompson kicks it off for Oklahoma. Wynn's going to push it on into the end zone, and it's Doug DeVos coming out with it. Ooh, look at that good block there to get him out across the 25 and up. Well, that's where they're going to put him, right on the 25. We'll check around the country for the scores and highlights with Jim in halftime. Timmy Brandt will be talking to the coaches. And Frank Rhodes will be eating chicken. <laughs> good old fried chicken. 113 to go in the first half now. Oklahoma 17-0. Nebraska had a chance to score at a first and goal at the six. Couldn't put it in. Missed field goal. Clayton on a little delay to DeBose. Bosworth and company there to get him. Troy Johnson also involved on the tackle. That was a collision. Rathman Lee blocking old Bosworth again. This time Bosworth won the play. <coughs> so far, that's about a draw, I think. <laughs> I tell you, that Bosworth is some football player. Of all the dominant players we've seen this year, he has to rank right at the top. Second down and nine for Nebraska. This is Doug DuBose. Casillas, 92, and 78, Jeff Tupper. Get up off the stack. It's third down and seven. It'll be third down and seven now for Nebraska. And the clock is rolling along at 15 seconds, and it looks like the Huskers are going to go to the clubhouse down 17. They do send Schnitzler out wide to the bottom of the picture. Let's we'll see if they put it up. Yeah, they want to. The pass is away, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Roger Lindstrom. The wing back in the first half is over, with the Sooners dominating 17 to nothing. This whole week long, it, it was a big play. Keith Jackson's a great player, great tight end. Hard to believe our leading rushers are tight end today so far. Our defense has played well, and there's a great play down here on the goal line for our defensive back to knock him out. Because we've got a great defense, and... That's a great goal line series. You know, when you talk about a big game like this coming in, you've got to think it's the big play that'll win it. I mean, and that's been the case thus far in this game. Well, we have, and, and uh, Jamal Holloway made big play. Keith Jackson, a couple big plays, and defense has played sound. We've given a little much in the rushing game a couple times, but basically it's been pretty good play. All right, Barry, good luck Thank in second you. half. All right, so it has been speed, surprise, and talent. The Sooners lead us. 17 rushers at halftime for Oklahoma, a tight end, and for Nebraska, a wingback. The reason the surprise plays, Keith, I think Nebraska uh, was so shocked by that uh, tight end reverse by Keith Jackson. Beautifully executed by them and with a great talent at uh, tight end that has tremendous speed to pull it off. Nebraska's going to have a tough time. They're not a catch-up type football team. They haven't been all year. They've got to just stick to their netting, I guess, and try to loosen up a little bit and hope that Oklahoma will turn the ball over. Let's take a look at the Jackson run that started the festivities because Oklahoma had started out basically with poor field position and then boom. This drive started, I think, from the one-yard line. They made a first down, and the punt return effect. When you start run a deep reverse, you look at the red shirts over there, the blockers that are leading the play. I think it's Spencer Tillman right there, number 20, making the key play, and the wide receiver had blocked Carl just enough to allow Jackson to go all the way 88 yards. 
Now a diagram of the second Oklahoma touchdown. This is the way it looks when you put it in the book and put it on the blackboard and put it on the fancy computer. But this is what it looks like now when everybody does what they're supposed to, especially the men carrying the ball, Jamil Holloway. Sebastian, Keith, this is the triple option. The first leg of it, the fake to the fullback. Now the quarterback has the option to leave it with the fullback, but the tackle closes. Boom, he hits Carr. And then the second part of the option is the quarterback pitching to keep it, and Holloway makes six people I think we can one two miss right there let's see if there's anybody else but the three. speed right there the third man at least three people right there missed him good blocking the fourth man right there just sensational run by the freshman Jamail Holloway he did sprain his uh, big toe on his left foot however on that particular play Nebraska's big play was this a wingback reverse. Dubose with the ball gives Devon Shepard. He runs for 52 yards, but Sonny Brown will get him out of bounds at the six. Nebraska then tried three plays, and uh, one of them, a third down pass, was batted aside, and uh, Dale Klein then missed a 23-yard field goal try, and that's where we are, 17-0 at halftime. A capacity crowd. The weather is still hanging on. It is still dry, and we hope it stays that way. Versus pretty well played first half defensively. What well, do you do now to stop that option? Well, the reverse just killed us, and uh, we had a couple plays, and we uh, there were big plays, and we didn't get the ball in the end zone. Uh, we think the score is a little deceiving, but Oklahoma's played very well, and we hope we can come back and play our kind of game this and, and make a ball game out of it. And we hope we can win the ball game. That may sound like a lot right now. We think we can. We'll see what get we get done. Two quick questions. First of all, how important is it to score early in this period, and will you play the freshman quarterback? Well, we're going to we're going to try to score early and we'll see what happens on the quarterbacks. We'll just have to see what happens. All right. Keith, I tell you, that's about as elusive as you can bet or get. <laughs> but he's got a couple of quarterbacks down there can play. And I wouldn't be surprised to, to see Steve Taylor, the freshman in the ball game. Well, he took some snaps this week and worked toward that goal. And they've got to come up with some passing if they hope to have a chance, I believe, to win this football game. And they've got a big, pretty good size hill to climb now, down 17 to nothing. And they'd be going into the win, Keith. Oklahoma's strategy is to score another quick one before the fourth quarter win changes in their favor. Thompson hangs it way up there. He goes back to the one-yard line for Keith Jones. And Keith comes back out around the 21. And that's where the Cornhuskers will go to work. The defense of Oklahoma, Darrell Reed, 210-pound defensive end, almost a linebacker, really. Jeff Tupper, big, 275, 6'5". Casillas, about 277, he said yesterday. Steve Bryant, 255, the other tackle, and Kevin Murphy, the other end at 230 pounds. Paul Milyazo at 220, and Brian Bosworth at 235. Bosworth has seven tackles to lead in the game now, and Nebraska comes out. Sends the play into the middle with Tom Rathman and nothing doing. The secondary is Decker, uh, Derek White at quarterback for Oklahoma. The other corner is Derek Crudup, sophomore and a freshman. And the safety people are Sonny Brown, a junior, and he's a dandy. And the other uh, free safety is a 6'3", 195 hitter, and also a junior. So they're young. A lot of misery for the Big 8 <laughs> and roster for next year and years to come. Here comes McCathern Clayton. And he's nailed down at about the 25-yard line by Tony Casillas. The offensive unit for Nebraska, the same group that started, Clayton, DeBose, Rathman, Shepard, Schnitzler, and the big guys up front who have not been able to uh, give much daylight to the running backs. Here's Casillas, number 92. Lewis the center gets a pretty good block on him, but watch him use his hands. And then finally leaps over and makes the play. So from just outside the 25, it's third down and six. McCatherine Clayton pulls it down, and he was pulled down in turn by Jeff Tupper, a redshirt senior from Juplin, Missouri. Reed, number 40, Chief, came across and forced Clayton to turn inside and Tupper the tackle was still pursuing and made the play. Give Reed an assist for him. Derek Shepard goes deep now for the Oklahoma Sooners and Dan Wingard is in to punt into the wind. He's got to keep this ball pretty low because the wind's going to knock it down if he gets it high. 
He gets a very tight spiral on his punt and gets a lot out of it. Derek Shepard with a fair catch call at the 29 of Oklahoma and the halftime stats. Here are the halftime stats. Nebraska made some yards. 162 isn't bad if they'd gotten some points when they got close. But Oklahoma with their big plays, 297 yards total offense. Just a sensational first half on their part. But it is a 60-minute game. And we'll see what now the Sooners can do with their first possession. It'll be Holloway at quarter, Carr at full, Stafford and uh, Collins, the halfbacks. The white man is Derek Shepard, and the ball goes into the middle to Lydell Carr, 6-2, 215 from Enid. Scott Tucker is the defensive end for Nebraska, 220. Chris Spockman, 250-pound tackle. Danny Noonan, the nose guard, 275. Look at that thick neck. And Big Jim Scow, 6'3", 250. Greg Reeves, the other defensive end, 225. Mike Knox, a linebacker, 235. And Kevin Parsons at 230. And it's second down at about five for the Sooners, just short of the 35. They take it inside one more time. Pick up a two on the carry by Carr. Brought down by Brad Smith in their defensive end. Brian Davis is a cornerback, number 32, 195. Mike Carl at the other corner, 5'11 and 180. The safeties, Brian Washington, started as a freshman at strong safety. And the free safety is Chris Carr. The offensive alignment, the same that started the game. Leading rushers, Nebraska Shepard, 52. And Oklahoma, Jackson with 117. Holloway gives the ball away, and here's the first down as Lydell Carr carries three successive times and moves the ball to the 42 where it's first down Sooners. That's vintage, vintage football for Oklahoma. Uh, run the fullback three times. But, Keith, let's go back and just think about what's at stake in this football game. A chance to win the Big 8 uh, title and then a chance to go and play against Penn State in the Orange Bowl and the national championship up for grabs. What a lot of stake here. And Oklahoma leading 17 to nothing as Holloway turns around and goes down the line carrying the ball like a loaf of bread and picks up 12, 15, 17, 18 yards. He goes all the way down to the Nebraska, almost to the Nebraska 40. This is a little bit different type of option, what we call a spin option. The quarterback is going to fake to the fullback and then spin down the line. There's really not much there except Holloway runs right through some more tacklers. Let's see who that is. Couldn't see his number right there. Finally, knocked down by uh, Davis. Just short of the 40 on Nebraska's side of the field in a first down, Oklahoma. Holloway still got it. And now is thrown down at about the 33 of Nebraska, and he was a half a step from shaking that tackler, Brian Davis, and going away. Here's how the scoring happened. In the first quarter with uh, Oklahoma backed up down on his 12-yard line, Jackson on a tight end reverse. Keith Jackson went 88 yards for a touchdown. Then Holloway with a great run for 43 yards to make it 14-0. And then Lasher, a 37-yard field goal to make it 17-0. That's where we are, just coming into the second half. Nebraska had a first and goal at the Oklahoma 6 and couldn't get it in the end zone and missed field goal. It's second down and two. Holloway gaining confidence with every snap of the ball. Breaks it inside the 20. He's out of bounds near the 17. Another type of option play. Not exactly the triple option. Fake of the trap up the middle, Keith, and the linebackers of uh, Nebraska were held and blocked. Beautiful execution and a nice run. Holloway with 15 carries, 105 yards. He had one big game in which he ran and passed for a total of 324, which became the new Oklahoma standard for a wishbone quarterback. Carr bounces off the stack and then falls ahead to about the 15. Once you establish the fullback up the middle, as we look at Barry Switzer, there's a real upset there. Iowa State. Uh... And 
that's what we'll do next week for you. We'll be in Birmingham, Alabama for the annual between Auburn and Alabama since the Oklahoma State loss today eliminates uh, a lot from the importance of that ball game insofar as national posture is concerned, though it is still a mighty concern in the state of Oklahoma. Here's Holloway being caught behind the line of scrimmage and eventually brought down. First contact was made, I think, by Jim Scow, and then Kevin Parsons put him down. Here's Tom Os Osmond, who's one of the most admired and respected coaches in the game. He hasn't had too much luck against Oklahoma. Four victories and nine losses. Beat him a few years ago, but he had to play him in the Orange Bowl. We got a sooner hurt, Frank, down on the field, and timeout call for it. Anthony Phillips. The game that counts. Jameel Holloway in the wishbone offense. It's not very difficult for a young man to hand the ball off to an eye back 40 times a game, but for you to 40 times a ball game to be involved in triple option reads and inside read and outside read and execute physically with a fullback uh, within split second decisions and judgment by a freshman is truly remarkable. We recruited him. We thought he was going to be that kind of player, Keith. He was an excellent high school quarterback from an excellent program. Well, I'm sure Chris Ferragamo's happy to hear that. And certainly there's a lot of truth in it because of Chris has produced a lot of them. Unbalanced line, Keith, for Oklahoma, first down. And third down and nine as Holloway rolls it. Wants a hump a little bit and then whips it into the end zone. The pass is incomplete, intended for Lee Morris, number 84. So he threw a bullet. But Morris pretty well covered, actually, could not get to it. Chris Carr was over there handling the coverage. And the end of the ball game comes Tim Lesher. Carrying his kicking tee which I'd like to see taken out of the game of football. At least lowered it one inch. It's a two-inch kicking tee, which uh, I think is just too easy for them. A lot of people feel that we've got to do something with the field goal problem. It's a 33-yarder. 9.23 to go in the third quarter. Sonny Brown to hold it. High snap. Sonny got it down. Lasher hit it square, and it is good. So the Sooners build the lead to 20 to nothing over old rival Nebraska. Nothing, averaging 8.6 yards per rush so far in this ball game. Thompson will kick it off. DeVose and Jones deep. And Thompson got a powerful leg. Knocks it well beyond the field of play. Nebraska comes to the 20, and here's Jim Lampley. And it is final at Ann Arbor, where Michigan has beaten Ohio State, so fill in the blanks. The Wolves will go to the Fiesta Bowl. The Buckeyes go to the Florida Citrus Bowl to play Brigham Young. Auburn is moved up into the Cotton Bowl as a result of this. Also, as we told you earlier, LSU beat Notre Dame 10 to 7. And, of course, the Faust speculation continues in South Bend. Back to Keith Jackson. And Steve Taylor is in at quarterback for Nebraska, a freshman from Spring Valley, California. Very, very quick and a pretty good passer. Two out of four in his first varsity appearance last week. He has played in the freshman season, handed that ball to Tom Rathman. And Rathman got it out near the 25-yard line. I don't believe these 18 year olds know the pressure, you, which you've already mentioned. But this is tremendous. Being trailing 20 to nothing, going against the number one defense in America, that's a tough place to be. Almost lost the ball, but recovers it and keeps it running the option play, and will have a yard or so on that carry. Miliazzo and Bosworth uh, greet him, so uh, here's baptism of young Steve Taylor. Bosworth just moves outside. When you've got uh, the big lineman and Murphy right there, you know you all you got to do is go out and make the play if you're the linebacker. Of course, you got a little block, you got to play him off, and then grab the freshman quarterback and throw him to the ground. down and four for the Cornhuskers. Taylor throwing. Whips it. Got a man. First down. Making the catch on his knees at the 36 is Rob Schnitzler. So you probably just saw the quarterback of the future for the Nebraska Cornhuskers throw this Hummer for the first down. He's throwing the ball against the wind. Long pass. Short yardage. But it makes enough for the first down. 101 coverage out there. Schnitzler is wide open. He just cradles it for the first down. Confidence builder for the Quarton Young freshman quarterback who hasn't played much this year. He's six feet, 180 pounder. Gives the ball to Rathman. Bang. Oh, Kevin was... Murphy.
Murphy, wasn't it? And Jeff Tupper. Cosidius really merits double team block, and on a play up the middle, you number 92, you better put two men on him. Let's see what they do. There's number one, Lewis. Number two, the right guard over there. Well, to that right tackle, double team him out of the play, but linebackers make the tackle. Well, you see what happened when they do that. There stands Bosworth, nobody in front of it. You're right, Keith. Oh, look out. One thing that the young quarterback, not only has he got to be a little bit nervous, he hasn't worked but a few times with the varsity center, Lewis. Well, he's been in five ball games, but through his first varsity passes last week, where it was two out of four. Keith, he's never worked when he's been in the ball game. He's been with a substitute offensive line and a backup center. So he's playing. He probably hadn't taken a snap point from Lewis all year long in practice. He's having trouble. Third down and about nine. Got a figure pass. Lindstrom goes in motion. And Taylor gets some heat and goes down. Kevin Murphy. Murphy was blocked for a moment by Tim Roth. But he wouldn't stay blocked. And the minute the young quarterback turned back up field, Murphy was right there. Murphy has that quickness. He didn't run himself out of the play by going around the offensive blocker. He holds right there as Rathman tries to make the block and comes back with his quickness and pulls him down. And in comes Dan Wingard to punt. Oklahoma out in front, 20 to nothing with six minutes to go in the third quarter. Derek Shepard is the deep man for the Sooners. Wingard punting into the wind, had a 48-yarder a while ago with a tight spiral, and he's got another dandy. Shepard again, fair catches at the 25-yard line, and that one into the wind is good for 42 yards. It is time for something to turn Nebraska's way if they are to have any hope. Not to get a turnover, that's what they're hoping for. Five men up on the front. Holloway takes the snap and hands it off to Leon Perry. Perry is a 220-pound freshman out of Orlando, Florida. And you talk about handling the ball, protecting the ball. Just try doing it when you're a fullback in the wishbone. The ball comes to you so quick. And to compound it, you've got one step before you get into traffic with it. And you don't know when you're going to get to keep it. And Keith, if you do not, the offense doesn't block the defensive tackle, and the quarterback leads it with him. The tackle is unblocked and can lower the boom over. I don't think I'd like to play that. <laughs> it takes two. It takes two. Oh, here's a set up on a started a tight end reverse. Keith Jackson with the ball. He was going to throw the thing. He absolutely set himself up to throw the ball downfield. Now, why would you say it? Would you give a tight end that responsibility? Frank Royals can tell you because he is from Little Rock. He's a great athlete. He played halfback some in high school. Safety man. As Keith said, it was going to be a revert in the round pass, but the Nebraska backs were not fooled on the play. But look at the speed of Jackson. 240 pounds rolling right up the middle for the first down. Comes up to the 47-yard line. He's liable to make that name famous yet. Here comes Holloway, turning the corner. And thrown out of bounds at the 43-yard line. And they go up and over the bench and uh, whacked around number 69. Uh, coming over to help sort them out. It was Chris Carr who uh, had a hold of him and uh, give you some idea of the strength of the freshman. He put his hand in Chris's face. And they waltzed all the way to the sidelines and through the bench. Keith, that's what's as much impressive as anything about Holloway is the strength he has running the football. He had, we knew he had the quickness, but I had no idea he was this strong. When defensive backs come up to hit him, he runs right through them if he doesn't stiff off on them first. So it's second down and about a half a yard, and they hand this one off to Spencer Tillman. And it looks like Spencer's getting his health back now as he's showing more quickness today. And he will have a first down for the Sooners at the Cornhusker 37. Once again, the offensive line of Oklahoma we hadn't talked much about, but they've been sensational getting the necessary yards for the fullback, holding off the inside for the quarterback to go out. Irvin Johnson has done a great job with it. Anthony Phillips, who was shaken up earlier at right tackle, is in there now playing. Holloway gives that ball to Perry, the fullback. 
And he just sort of sneaks in there for four yards. Here's Tim Brandt. Keith, the medical staff down here on the Nebraska bench has been working on Rob Slitzer. When he caught Steve Taylor's first down pass in the last offensive series for the Huskers, he caught his cleat when he was going down and twisted his knee and then banged his kneecap on the turf. They've been working on it ever since. He was on his back just moments ago, but he is up now. They are still working on it, and it looks like they're going to get it ready to go and try to play on it again, but he is in some kind of pain right now. All right, Timmy, thank you. 34-yard line of Nebraska, second down, and long six for Oklahoma. Holloway, which is it back. Spencer Tillman past the yard marker at a first down for the Sooners inside the 25. Keith, this is incredible. I never thought I would see a freshman, true freshman quarterback handle all types of option plays as uh, Holloway has done. That was a tramp option. I guess they've run five different types of option plays, and he's handled them all perfectly. Call it the 24 of Nebraska. And first down Sooners with 3.40 to go, third quarter. Orange Bowl conference title, national championship possibility. Right now, looks like it's got Oklahoma red on it. As uh, the ball came loose for a moment, they're scrambling for it. They're calling it down at the 17. Well, Leon Perry was the one uh, searching for it. The old adage that uh, ruled that the ground cannot cause a fumble, and I think that's what happened. In the pile up, when Perry hit the ground, the ball popped back. Let's see if we can detect it. Notice carefully, number two has the ball right up the middle. Good, good blocking right there. Let's see. Well, we couldn't tell. Second down. Long three for Oklahoma. Holloway. First bust. They busted that play. Yeah, Holloway went the wrong way, or the backs did one. But let's see what happened on the fumble. Here's Holl Here's Perry, number two. If no, the ball... Uh, he's got his hand on If his the hand's ball. on the ball, it's a correct call. Nope, I believe the ball came out. The ball was out of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard for the officials to see that. Third down and three. And a timeout now by Oklahoma. So there was something a little wrong here, something a little out of step. And rather than mess it up on this end of the field with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, Holloway call timeout. Test pilot Chuck Yeager. against Oklahoma. He says this about that. Well, it has been uh, something that the fans in Nebraska haven't appreciated, and actually, uh, we wish it was uh, more than that. But we've done the best we can, and they had some great football teams in the uh, early 70s. We probably didn't match up with them very well. I think the last five years or so, we've matched up pretty well. The games have been close. We've won three out of the last four, and uh, so we'll see what happens. I don't see any reason for Tom Osborne to ever have to make any excuse for anything. So. I don't need the key. <laughs> Third down and three. Lydell Carr back in there at fullback. Ball on the Husker 17. And it is Holloway. Touchdown. staff are busy getting ready for their Pittsburgh game tonight but I bet you they'll look at this game several hours because Mr. Holloway has indeed been the Walter Mitty of this day he now has one hundred and thirty one yards he has scored two touchdowns and Nebraska now has called a timeout let's look at the touchdown again Keith tremendous blocking and also fake it. This is true vintage wishbone right here as Holloway 
shows his speed. The defensive back has to take the pitch. He outruns all of the pursuit, turns it down the field, and gets to the corner of the touchdown very easily. Now from the end zone, again we see the fake to the fullback. The backs come up and cut off the safety. And of all things, the quarterback circles the tight end's block. Barry Hill, number 85, makes the key block. And if you want to see why it works, number 85. Watch him block the defensive end right there, Smith. He blocks him in right there. Smith doesn't know which way to go. Do I go inside or outside? Now, from the time he decides he cannot do it, that's Holloway, I'm sorry, number 91. Blocked by Barry Hill, 85. And now Lasher's ready for the extra point try. Penalty flags are down because Nebraska had uh, crossed into the neutral zone. Nebraska had called the uh, timeout a while ago because they only had 10 people on the field. And I'm sure they'll decline this and leave the point up on the board, which will be a 27 to nothing Oklahoma lead. Oklahoma's already run off the field, though Vince Carlson has got now to chase over there and see whether or not they want to take the penalty and maybe go for two. Well, they'll assess the penalty on the kickoff. Will they? Yes. Okay. All right, 2.26 to go in the third quarter, and it's a big one for the Sooners. Here's Jim. All right, and for any of you who may have tuned in late and don't yet know the Cotton Bowl picture, here it is. Texas in Austin beat Baylor today 17 to 10. As a result of that, Baylor will go to the Liberty Bowl, where the likely opponent is LSU, and Texas will play on Thanksgiving Day in College Station, Texas, against Texas A&M, Jackie Sherrill's team. For the right to go to the Cotton Bowl, A&M now leading TCU 39-0 in the third quarter. So Auburn will be playing in the Cotton Bowl against the winner of the Texas, Texas A&M game to be played on Thanksgiving Day. Frightening, isn't it, Keith, to think how good Holloway can be if he plays for three more years and stays healthy and develops with that offense. It's terrifying, dude. It's terrifying. I mean, he's a, he's just been terrific. Right? He's got all the qualities. Look, look at this stat. Keith Jackson, the tight end. Jamel Holloway have accounted for 305 yards. Jackson is just a sophomore. Holloway is an 18-year-old freshman putting on a show against the number two ranked team in America. That's fantastic. And you got another one sitting over there on the bench, another freshman in there, Eric Mitchell, that a lot of people feel was the best athlete in the state of Arkansas West. No question about it. He'll be in this ball game in just a minute, Keith, I believe. That ball is kicked into the stands by Thompson. And so Nebraska now will one more time come from the 20 and see what they can do about things. But it's quickly getting out of hand. Here's another sophomore, Lorenzo White, that's destined for starter. Jim Everett. UCLA leading USC. That's uh, Bruins win that there in the Rose Bowl. Pretty good football team. First down. Taylor, the freshman in for Nebraska. There's that re wing back reverse with Shepard carrying, shaking off people. Oh, that's a fine run by Vaughn Shepard. Jeepers, he had a 52 yarder earlier, and now he turns in a physical run for the first down. Well, to show you that Shepard, this is not just a flash. Shepard for the season has 19 of these type plays. He's averaging 12 yard a rush. And here is why. Boy, a good fake right there inside. And keeps his legs spinning. Goes on through. Breaks another tackle for the first down. You don't run through Dante Jones very many times like that, do you? Not that young sophomore from Texas is a winner. Dante Jones. Ball just outside the 32 and Steve Taylor rolling out, gets his pass away, and throwing on the run, sails behind Tom Banderas, the tight end. Todd Frain, uh, the starting tight end, playing with a very sore ankle, but he has been playing. That's dominance. Well, Nebraska, right yes, Nebraska have, was the number one offensive team rushing, number two in total in Oklahoma. Uh, just sensational because of one thing, the execution of the quarterback. That's the critical variable right there for any wishbone team. How good is your quarterback? Steve Taylor gives the ball inside 
But the inside game for the Huskers has been almost nil. Jim again. Well, Keith, this is a day when every farmer football fan in the state of Iowa can forget his sorrows for a moment as the Hawkeyes beat Minnesota 31-9, meaning that they will go to the Rose Bowl for the second time in Hayden Fry's tenure there. And Iowa State upset Oklahoma State 15-10, so the best the Cowboys can do now is the Gator Bowl. Yours, Keith. And it's third down and five. Steve Taylor dodges one man, but there are others. Oh, my goodness, there are others. One of them named Murphy, and the other named Jones. He was trying to run an option play, which Nebraska was attempting, and you get penetration from the defense, you got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Taylor had no chance whatsoever. Defensive penetration, this great Oklahoma defense. Keith, I wouldn't want to try to score against them. Unless you can pass like Vinny Testaverde. Well, that's a different story. You're right. Hanging, spinning punt, fair caught, and fumbled away. And the ball is loose, rolling on the ground, and the Cornhuskers cover it at the 19-yard line. Mike Heffler, an offensive guard, jumped on the ball that slithered away from Derek Shepard. So finally, we've got a break here, unless we've got a flag, do we? No, Keith, nope. they were talking of that. They're still huddling as to whether the receiver had enough room to catch the ball. I think he did right there. Well, his own people were more in the way than Nebraska yeah, You have to give the, the safety man two yards of room. Let's see what he calls. We have an inadvertent whistle on a free ball. We replay the down. Oh, me, what a piece Wait a of minute now. Ball. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that, Keith. The, 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 the team that can take the play. They can take the play, Mr. Carlson. No, no, no. no yes, they can, Keith. Whistle. Yes, they can, Keith. They can take the play. Believe me. They can take the play. As Tom Osmond, if he knows the rule, they have the choice of refusing the play. I'm telling you, Keith, that is a new rule. Put in the rule book. Yeah, they have the option of, replay, of taking the play on an inadvertent whistle. I'm telling you, they have the choice. Now, you wait and see. Somebody's going to run out there and tell them. Mm. I don't believe they're going to get away with it, but Mr. Carson is wrong. I'll get in the rule book and read it to you. They have a choice to play the play. Or dig out the book. I, I tell you, we had that before, and that's what we call. High-hanging kick this time is a little better putt by uh, Wingard. And this time, Shepard holds on to it and has possession for Oklahoma back at the 17-yard line after a 45-yard punt. But before that inadvertent whistle, Nebraska had the ball at Oklahoma's 19. Keith, you can take the plate. I'm going to find it here in a minute and read it to you. That was changed about three or four years ago at my best. I, you I go can, ahead and find it. I'm going to look for it. I'll call a ball game. we got 51 <laughs> seconds to play in the third quarter. I, I don't think I'm wrong on that because I looked it up after I missed it one other time. <laughs> and Jamel Holloway stays in there at quarterback with Carr at fullback. And Stafford and Collins behind him. And uh, gives the ball to Carr, and that time the Nebraska defensive surge was so strong that it decked Holloway and the fullback Carr. Clock is rolling along. Oklahoma leading by a score of 27 to nothing and have been absolutely dominant in the ball game. And in the last play, that defensive surge came from Jim Scow, whose hackles are up. Well, Jim Scow's a senior. Didn't his first year he's been a starter, Keith, but he's had a sensational year. Travis Simpson, the Oklahoma center now, leaving the field, and uh, Rick Ewells comes in to replace him to snap the ball. So he was rattled on that last play and had to leave. Loss of two, so call it second down and 12 from the 15. This is Holloway coming around the corner to the 20. And he took a pretty good lick upside the head that time from a pursuing Cornhusker, number 19, Brian Siebler. He went down and Siebler ran into him. Full tilt, and the third quarter is over. 
27 nothing. As long as the receiver's going to catch the ball and the umpires and the side judge and the referee and all the officials interpret him or assume that he's going to catch that football, the play is still alive. He blew his whistle thinking that the player was going to make the catch and it hit the ground. They said a loose ball on a kick like that. There is no option for Nebraska. It is just a kick over. They take it back. And Frank, he said to tell you that he knows the rule. He was emphatic <laughs> with it. And that when that ball is loose, when they blow that whistle, there is no option. They okay. re-kick it. If if uh, if you'd blown the whistle when Nebraska had the ball, they would have had the option to keep it. Guaranteed. <laughs> Third down at six. And Holloway is caught behind the line of scrimmage and thrown out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. It says, if an official inadvertently sounded the whistle during a kick, the ball becomes dead immediately and the down will be replayed. That's 4-1-2-B-4. Okay. If it were to occur during the last time down of a period, the period would be extended by an untimed down. So according to that and according to Vance, he's right. You're wrong. <laughs> if it had happened, read there, though, Keith, if it had happened on a play. Oh, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Here's the punt out of there by Winchester, and it's a pretty good one. They've handled this win pretty well today. The ball comes all the way out to midfield where Rob Schnitzler steps ahead to the 49 and uh, makes the fair catch. Auburn and Alabama. Now, here's the situation in that ball game. Auburn is off to the Cotton Bowl. But Alabama, if Tennessee should lose or tie with uh, Vanderbilt next week, then Alabama's back in the hunt, and it would be up to the Sugar Bowl committee to pick whichever team they wanted. So Alabama's still alive insofar as the Sugar Bowl is concerned. Tennessee won big today over Kentucky. Steve Taylor has it. Wants to throw it. Now he's got a convoy on his side of the field. But by now, he can't find anybody to throw as people were starting to turn back to help him. And he'll wind up with a gain down to about 44. Here are the stats for the third quarter. Oklahoma still dominating the game. The big plays have been the difference. The in the round and, of course, the quarterback option play with uh, Jamel Holloway has just destroyed the Nebraska defense, which has played so outstanding throughout the season. Second down and call it four yards for the Huskers. Taylor zips one. It is intercepted at the 26. Coming up with it, Derek White. Taylor missed his man. There's a penalty flag down. Keith. But there is a flag back up around the line of scrimmage. And it might. I don't think it's going to nullify the play no. because Oklahoma people are pointing toward Nebraska's side of the field. That's it. Here's Smith trying to go inside. A little bit quickly, the offside penalty right here. He's moving before the ball is snapped. He tries to get back, but he can't do it. And we've got 14 minutes exactly to play in the ball game. 14 minutes to play in the ball game. 27 to nothing. And the Oklahoma Sooners have the edge in everything because Oklahoma State, the opposition for the Sooners next week, lost today at Iowa State 15 to 10. Now the Sooners have the football first down at their own 26-yard line. Holloway's gone all the way at quarterback for them, but the Huskers have handled him pretty well since the first quarter. But the first quarter was a big play quarter for Oklahoma, and they were able to jump out to a four-to-nothing lead. Kevin Parsons making the last hit on Holloway. Oklahoma's field position today in this ball game has not been anything to write home about. Nine of their 11 possessions have started inside their own 26. Black hair. Red. One of them back on the two. Second down and still 10. All the way back to throw it. Goes down the middle for Jackson. He got it and dropped it. Had it in his hands, but he went down with two Cornhuskers. Couldn't pull it in. Brian 
Davis and Brian Siebler right with him. How about this freshman quarterback, Keith? Take an option play. We talked about he has to throw deep because the safety men are up trying to help in the running play, and Jackson makes a great effort. He leaves his feet. The ball hits in his hands. He has hold of it. No, he doesn't. Throws right through his hands and onto the turf incomplete. Very close to another great play of the combination of the freshman to the sophomore tight end. Weather wintry, 36 degrees, wind chill 12 degrees. That's why you're quickie, Jim Brent. Here's Holloway again on third down and 10, under pursuit. Now he's going to get a little help from one of the officials, too. <laughs> and tried to turn back up the field. Jim Scow, of all people, Big Jim is all the way down field to bring him down. What a game Scow has played. This is about his 15th or 16th sack of the season, but he just doesn't give up. He's been blocked by Pope number 63. A little bit of help there from the tight end, uh, Barry Hill. Watch him run. That's the thing he has, that quickness, and he has good agility. He makes the top. Now Oklahoma's got to punt it out of the end zone. And it's not very good. It got up in that wind, didn't have much rotation on it, and the wind just spun it right down, and it turns out to be almost a nothing kick, only 16 yards for Winchester. It caught a gust of wind just at the wrong time, and it just knocked it right down. So here now is Nebraska's best starting opportunity. But they're going against a great defense, Keith, and they've got a freshman. Nebraska still got the freshman quarterback in there. Number 11, 18-year-old youngster from California, from San Diego. Well, he's the man of the future, I expect, so might as well go ahead and baptize him. Taylor gets his pass away, wide open, Crane, and... Todd Drain, the tight end, is down at the Oklahoma eight-yard line. Keith, that's the second time that Nebraska has tried this particular bootleg pass, which has been their favorite play for all season long. A delayed fake to the backfield, roll out, tight end, dragging across the middle, wide open. Watch how wide open he is. Linebacker still up there playing the fake. Drain catches it and trails it for the first down. First and goal. They had a first and goal. Back in the second quarter of the sixth, Taylor, their quarterback, keeps it and goes to the one. Almost made the end zone, but Sonny Brown pinched him just in time. The Sayers, number 92, continues to disrupt. Make the big plays. Let's see what he does. Oh, boy, did uh, Lewis make a great block on him, number 68. Now let's see what he does. He gets free and comes back and grabs one leg, at least, of Taylor. So it's second down and goal, the ball at the one. Dubos is hit back at the two. Tony Casillas that time got loose. Casillas shot the gap that time, coming over the left shoulder of the offensive center. Right there, penetrates. Once again, the center should have blocked him rather than let the off guard. Casillas is too good for the off guard to try to scoop block on a play like that. That is the first time Doug DuBose has seen the ball this half. Shows you how dominant the Oklahoma team has been. It's third down and goal from the two. Oklahoma's trying to shut him out. Fumble. Oklahoma claims it. They do have it. Bosworth, I believe, comes out of there with a the ball. But Taylor never got away with the ball clean off the snap. It popped up in the air. Everybody was grabbing for it. And I do believe it was Bosworth who claimed it at the one. To match the higher intelligence of the new Commodore 128, an Apple II C. You have your option, but not on a kick where possession was not established. Oklahoma with the fumble recovery. Bosworth did get it. And they start at the one. And they're still there, just about. Here's another look at the fumble. See if we can carefully look in the middle. Look at the offensive center. They got two men right over him. Casillas, and I can't see the other man's number. I guess Williams, yeah. uh, Clarence Williams right there. And the center trying to block two men. The quarterback trying to get away from those two men. Fumble the ball, and I believe Bosworth came yeah. up with it. He did. Goal line defense they had both their nose guards in there. Ball is still at the one where it's second down. This time they give it to Spencer Tillman. And 
Tillman works his way out to about the six with ten and a half minutes to play. And here's Jim. And just to recap, if you weren't with us before, Michigan beat Ohio State in Ann Arbor 27-17, and that means this for the bowl picture. Ohio State goes to the Florida Citrus Bowl to play Brigham Young. Auburn moves into the Cotton Bowl to play the winner of Texas, Texas A&M. Michigan had already made a deal to go to the Fiesta Bowl. They could have wound up in the Cotton Bowl had they not made such a deal. They may have cost every school in the Big Ten $100,000, Keith. Well, they were fetching around making those deals. Uh quite a while in the Big Ten. You're not supposed to make the deal for this, this afternoon, Keith, but yeah, we but can't everybody control does. Everybody does. You can't control it. No. That's what makes the whole thing so dead dumb farcical. Everybody's out making their deals uh, four weeks before the season's over. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. 9 o'clock Eastern Time next Monday. Seahawks have been wobbling a little bit. 49ers have been regaining their posture in the NFC West. What were the Los Angeles Rams uh, having some winning problems? Keith, I still love to see Joe Montana play. He's my favorite quarterback in professional football. We saw him win so many great games for Notre Dame. Come from behind, I believe, is the best we've ever had in college. Penalty against Oklahoma makes it third down and long back on the uh, three-yard line. And they don't get much out of that play. So once again, Winchester's going to have to come out and load his rifle out of the end zone. End of the big win, too, Keith. The win seems to have picked up. Winchester's going to have to get a tight spiral if he's going to get any distance. The minute the ball starts wobbling, that win compounds it, and the ball will not go very far. Oklahoma's only got 10 men. Now they've got the 11th man in the game. Yeah, they need this fellow. <laughs> the he's there. the blocker. <laughs> he's the protector for the punter. Kick is out of there, and it's a much, much, much better kick. He had 16 yards the last time. This time he spins it out to the 47th, where Nebraska will have it. And again, Jim. Keith out in the Los Angeles Coliseum. They've just started the third quarter with UCLA trying to lock up its Rose Bowl berth, leading SC 13 to 7. The margin, two John Lee field goals, number 78 and 79 in his career, tying and then breaking the NCAA career record previously held by Luis Zendejas of Arizona State. Yours, Keith. John missed two or three last week. It was uh, a state of shock. He also became a citizen. Catherine Clayton is back into the ball game for Nebraska, and the pitch play to Doug DeBose moves from the 47, maybe to the 44. Yeah, they'll give him the 44, and three yards on the carry. And time remaining is 8:45. Couple of things I want to point out. Uh, one, uh, in case you're the question of quality about these. Uh, football teams on these two teams. Tom Osborne, during his 13 years at Nebraska, has had 28 All-Americans. Barry Switzer, in 13 years at Oklahoma, has had 39 All-Americans. And there's been some highs and trophy players in there, too. Yes, a total of five of them. Long passes complete downfield to Liddell Green. Liddell Green's second interception of the day. Glenn, Liddell Glenn. Glenn is just hanging on the sidelines and it looked for all the world and that's why I called it a completion. The ball was just simply thrown <laughs> right to him. I wonder why you said completion, but he did. Clayton hits him right on the numbers. Watch this. Watch this. Couldn't have been thrown better to him. Right there, Glenn. And another reason why, watch what happens to the quarterback. Pressure on the quarterback. There's Lewis, number 68, trying to block Casillas. But here's the play right here. As Clayton throws the ball. The receiver falls down and is totally gone. If McCathern had not been shielded probably by those big people, then he might have seen that his receiver was down on the ground and not thrown the ball. Eric Mitchell now comes into the ball game at quarterback for Oklahoma. He is the other freshman. 6'1", 195 from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And Leon Perry, the fullback, is turned around. Nebraska got a little penetration right over that mesh point. Calls the fumble. Keith, here's what the top ten did today in the coaches' poll. UPI. 
Auburn plays next week. We'll get a chance to see Bo Jackson in his run, and hopefully for the Heisman Trophy. He's still a candidate, obviously. Still think the race is wide open, don't you? Sure. Second down and 12 now. As Mitchell goes down the line on the option and keeps it. And is ridden down by Chris Spuckman. Again, Jim. Keith, here's an interesting story we haven't touched on since early in the season. Howard Schnellenberger's first season at Louisville ended today. The 45-21 loss to 1AA Eastern Kentucky left Schnellenberger's team at 2-9 and nine in his last three years at Miami. His team's only lost a total of seven games. And, of course, the rumors are swirling again. Philadelphia Eagles, Pittsburgh Panthers in Pittsburgh. Schnellenberger says no. He's staying put in Louisville. Back to you. And the ball sits just outside the 23 for a third down and 12 play for the Oklahoma Sooners. This time Mitchell comes this way with it. Bounces off uh, Jim Scow and goes the other way with blocking. He'll have a first down up at the 36 where Kevin Parsons finally ran him down. That's exactly what Mitchell did in high school. There's a toe. That's Holloway, and he's having trouble with that toe that he sprained when he scored his touchdown back in the first quarter. Well, it's 10 degrees chill factor and 34 uh, actual. All he needs to do is take off the shoe. It's cold enough to <laughs> chill it. Derek Mitchell was a great scrambler in high school. He was very adept at getting on open field and very seldom could one man bring him down. That's what he's done today. Sensational freshman from California. Ball is given off to Anthony Stafford and not much there for Stafford on the first down play at the 36-yard line with less than six minutes to play now. Mitchell I'm told didn't participate much in practice because of a sore ankle this week. But he's out there right now getting some seasoning. A question of trivia that came up yesterday and uh, almost fell out of the door of the truck when Chuck, answer, uh, Chuck Howard answered it. He couldn't believe it. But I just wonder how many people, and probably a lot of people around this part of the country do, but who the all-time interception leader at the University of Oklahoma would be. Sooners now are going to spend the time out with five minutes and 24 seconds to play in the ball game. 27 nothing. The Sooners in the ball game in a 27 nothing lead. Tony Casillas and Steve Bryan are joking and patting each other on the back, talking about who had the best hits today, who was getting to the ball the quickest. These are the types of things that you can afford to do late in the ball game with a big lead from a team that hasn't given up a touchdown in 16 quarters. Keith. All right, Tim. And here is second down and 10 with Eric Mitchell at quarterback for the Sooners from their own 36. And the line he goes. Bounces outside and gets up across the 40 to the 41. The all-time interception leader at Oklahoma, a fellow named Daryl Roy. I started to say that, but I didn't think teams threw that much in those days. Daryl also has the longest punt return, uh, I think, in Oklahoma. That's another bit of he trivia. Had, he had 17. They played both ways in his time. Yes. As we look at a happy Barry Switzer, and uh, one thing, Keith, I think I want to mention, Jim Donnan, the new offensive coordinator here at uh, Oklahoma, has done a great job. He was at Missouri last year, and Barry brought him down, and he's been the one responsible for working and training Jamel Holloway and Eric Mitchell. Mitchell's hard to get a hold of. He's got a first down. He's the best at reversing his field that we've ever had around this part of the country. Here it is again. The play's going to the left, but there's nothing there. Nebraska plays perfectly. Washington, number five, has the jersey, but he can't hold it. Then uh, Mitchell cuts back inside of a couple of uh, Nebraska players, but he couldn't make the play, and he finally gets the first down. Boy, that's aggravating. You're, you're getting whooped, and you got him pinned, and you can't put him down, and it just... When it rains, it pours. <laughs> this momentum is what happens. 48-yard line, Lydell Carr given the ball, and uh, 
uh, just really had no chance at all to get started because Neil Smith was arriving about the time the ball did. College scoreboard coming up with all the, the bowl run down for you. Oklahoma rushing by quarters 211 in the first big play was that two, uh, that 88 yard uh, tight end uh, around by Jackson 48 in the second quarter came back with 138 in the third and now they're starting to add up a little bit here at the fourth they had only six for a while but they at this particular point in the game have 406 yards Nebraska had been given up less than 200 so they've doubled it. carrying Damon Stell in the game for the first time today, a sophomore out of Oklahoma City. And uh, the Sooners now, after the loss of car carry, Stell gets it back to the line of scrimmage, and they still need 10. Keith, as impressive as the offense of Oklahoma has been, their defense has been likewise. And Gary Gibbs played here at Oklahoma as a defensive coordinator and has done a magnificent job of molding these youngsters into a great defensive unit. I think this defense is almost more impressive than the offense, really. And it's hard to choose, but I'd like to have both. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Third down and ten. And Mitchell is caught and thrown down as he crosses midfield. At 2.40 to go. And we're looking ahead to next Saturday when we'll be at Legion Field in Birmingham for Auburn and Alabama. Auburn ranked number nine right now. But this is another one of those ball games where temper, and I mean temper, has something to do with the outcome. Well, we'll look at Alabama again, get a chance to see Mike Shula, the great year that he has had. Uh, most of the year, he's been the passing efficiency leader in the NCAA. We get to see Bo Jackson again, who I think is one of the great runners of all time in college football. The kick is away by Mike Winchester, and not a particularly good one, but he gets a very good roll on it. And the Sooners are happy to see it roll dead at the three. That winds up with the roll, a 49-yard punt. Taylor is back at it quarterback and here comes your swinging gate. They got four of them lined up outside out here. Didn't have a chance to run this one before. Now you might as well have some fun. No it's not Taylor. It's Travis Turner in there. And the pass is thrown downfield and goes incomplete intended for Vaughn Shepard. I was wandering around the hotel this morning before coming to the ballpark and I walked this gentleman walked up to me and introduced himself as the mayor of Anchorage Alaska Tony Knowles with his pal Jack Dugan Cornhuskers and they claim to have traveled the greatest distance to see the ball game today. Mayor Knowles the guest of uh, Norman Mayor Steve Thrower this weekend and now Taylor comes into the ball game for Alaska so Travis Turner got one shot at it with the gimmick play and uh, the ball is given to Keith Jones and Jones trying as they were everybody faking pass and trying to show it but didn't result in much at a minute and a half to go in the ball game. The last time Oklahoma had back to back shutouts 1967 they did it twice beat Washington State Maryland back to back and then beat Missouri Colorado later in the season. So that's been a while. I think the most perspectival comment I've seen today though came in a press release that uh, Baylor hadn't won a football game uh, at Austin, Texas since the Truman administration in 1951, and they still haven't. They lost today. Here's Turner back in the game, and almost sacked in the end zone, is intercepted, and then dropped. Oh, my goodness. Scott Garl had the ball right in his tummy. And trying to run with it too soon, maybe, didn't hang on to it. Well, the old pass protection breaks down here as uh, Oklahoma knows it, going to pass the ball. Get, uh, Turner does a good job of getting rid of the ball, avoiding the, the safety, which would have been uh, two points more for Oklahoma. Carl drops it right in his hands. Well, I just had my first <laughs> good sneeze of the day. Boy, I mean, it's the Blue Norther has arrived. High kick up into the wind. Isn't going to go very far unless it gets a big roll, and then it goes sideways, and Nebraska's punter. Dan Wingard winds up with a 37-yarder as the ball is touched dead up around the 40. To put in perspective how good this Oklahoma defense has played today, Nebraska tailbacks, the three of them have averaged 202 yards a game through the first 10 contests. 
so Oklahoma defense has done a magnificent job. 50 seconds to play in the ball game. The Sooners will go over to Stillwater next week against Oklahoma State. And then we'll be back here on December 7 for the finale as they wind up against SMU. First down for Oklahoma at the 40. Eric Mitchell stays in there at quarterback. Fully capable of breaking the line. And here he goes. Shoved out of bounds. At the 19 by Guy Rozier. What, what is the today's results of the Nebraska tailbacks, Chief? Dubose has 45 yards, Jones six, Miles nothing. Here's the speed and quickness of this young man. A little move right there, and the safety man, Siebler, misses him. Totally had a good shot at him, a good fake. Mitchell goes down, stepped out of bounds right there. Mitchell now on six carries, has 47 yards, and you've got 43 seconds to go in the ball game. Which are playing the reserves now. Oklahoma today has been probably the most impressive football team we've seen all year, wouldn't you say, Keith? Both offense and defensively? Well, I thought Miami was pretty impressive today. Well, we they saw were, it here. They were just as impressive, but today against a team like this, they have just completely dominated both sides of the football. Nebraska has nothing. Oklahoma has 430 yards rushing today. Well, you got to be able to throw the ball against them. Yep. Moving to the line on the offense. First down. And Miami did a great job because they split wide receivers out that can run, and uh, Bosworth and those people, and Casillas wasn't in the ball game. But Bosworth and the linebackers were not a factor against the press of Miami. Oh, well, it's first down and 15 after the penalty. And that's... Uh, Ball is loose and picked up by a Nebraska man fumbling down the sidelines. Who is Chris Bachman of all people? And big Chris and the zone into the end it's zone. It's a touchdown, Keith. And it's going to be a touchdown. He caught it in the air. He took the ball away from the back. Maloney. Pierce. Don Maloney uh, had the ball popped loose from him. And big old Chris Bachman picked that thing up and took off. 6'5", 250, and then he got some help going downfield. And all of his offensive line buddies were on the goal line by the time he got there to help him celebrate. Maloney has the ball right there. Number 96, Scal, knocks the ball out. And number 76 catches it <laughs> in the air and uh, goes lumbering right down the field. Look at him. Put those moves on. All the way, 76 yards for the touchdown. And so the Huskers avoid the shutout with 26 seconds to play in the ball game. And the conversion try by Dale Klein is good. Scout, number 96. Again, a big play on his part as he works down the line. Maloney, number 23, right there. The ball pops right out. And number 76 has caught it. <laughs> and uh, no one Oklahoma team knows that he has the ball. And he goes all the way for the touchdown. 26 seconds left to play. Dan Wingard is on there now. And uh, obviously they're showing onside kick. Oklahoma's expecting it. There it is. The ball is caught in the air by number 37, Todd Smith, the defensive back. And Smith gets it back down inside the 40. And that should do it. Well, the clock stops, Keith, and uh, will not start again until the Oklahoma snaps the ball. One more play. And then the Oklahoma Sooners can really celebrate. Number 20. Is that 37, Keith? Yeah, yeah Smith. 37. Boy, he makes a great play here. The ball's coming across in there. He jumps up and comes close to breaking clean. He almost went home with it. Yeah, one man probably right there. The kicker it would have been a touchdown. They got to snap it one time. That privilege will go to Rick Hughes, the center, and Eric Mitchell, the quarterback. And this game will be history. They don't need to snap it again. The Oklahoma Sooners with two games to play now. Terribly impressive against the Cornhuskers of Nebraska today, winning by a score of 27 to 7. And the Sooners, if they win their next two, 
will certainly be in posture to battle Penn State for a national championship, provided, of course, Penn State can handle Pittsburgh in a game tonight. Crowd flowing down out of the stands. Bear is trying to work his way over to shake hands with Tom Osmond. They're good friends. They have strong competitors. Two great programs, but it was all Oklahoma today. Jim Brandt now. All right, Barry, I know. Guys, Please, you know. Hold on. Congratulations on Thank a great you, win. Thank you. It was a great win. We had a lot of things happen good for us. Our coaches did a great job. Our players played well. It was a great effort. But our defense deserved to shut out. Make no I know how upset you were when they ran that ball back just now for that touchdown. It, it was, I, uh, I, thought, I thought we had a chance, you know, obviously to half the way we were planned to have it, but it's a great win. It would be a great football team. Tonight. I'm going to let you go for your safety. Congratulations. You, you're coming with me. I'll lead you through. All right, Keith. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to get caught in that crowd. But they're happy. And your final score. The Oklahoma Sooners 27, Nebraska 7.